one last supplement question because I'm looking back at past notes and I'm probably going to mispronounce this, but edebinone, sort of more absorbable version of CoQ10. Maybe that's a fair description. Maybe it isn't. Do you still take that or no longer? I think CoQ10 is on the short list of five supplements that I would recommend to people. Although I don't take it, I do get quite a bit from the foods that I eat. I eat a lot of heart, liver, animal products that have kind of CoQ10 in it. But mm. if you're on a statin, if you're on metformin and other drugs, they, they could potentially deplete you. And then CoQ10 has a solid track record for cardiovascular health. So idebinone is kind of a drug stabilized form of that. And then when I discussed that on your podcast, that was in the context of something called the Deanna protocol. The Deanna protocol mm -hmm. is after Deanna Tadone. She has ALS. She was diagnosed well over a decade ago, was given two or three years to live. She's alive and well today. We were just emailing <laughs> yesterday. So Deanna Tadone had advanced ALS and then has been stabilized using the Deanna protocol, which included at the time idebinone, but I think it became a drug. So idebinone became yeah. the standard of care for Friedrich's ataxia, and then you couldn't get it on Amazon. But I think ubiquinol or CoQ10, it would be a, a good mm. substitute for that. And I don't use it myself, but I think that's if you're older in age and you have cardiovascular heart problems like in your family. However, with that said, we actually did ubiquinol. We did high doses in our animal models and we saw some kidney toxicity. We had some animals oh, die and we Jesus. didn't know. But that was in airflow. rodent models. And we use, <laughs> again, we use like really high dose for oxygen toxicity. We've looked at everything under yeah. the sun, but it was this unexpected side effect. And then I went to the literature and showed that it's such a powerful antioxidant in some ways. And it maybe was concentrating in the kidneys. So there was a couple papers came up and then we think that that's why the animals may have died. We were using a MitoQ, like various forms that are like more mitochondrial specific. Mm. We're using more potent forms of, of the CoQ10. So it may not be similar to the commercially available forms. What are the other supplements on that short list? You said four or five supplements. What are the other ones? That I take? Yeah. So creatine monohydrate would be kind of the staple thing that I've used since I was, I don't know, a teenager. First and foremost, exogenous ketones and the data is emerging on that. I think that's going to be the next creatine for that. But yeah. creatine for Alzheimer's disease, we didn't talk about it, but a dosage of 10 to even if you're larger, 20 grams, and that's not a misspeak there, 20 grams of creatine, yeah. spread out, you know, maybe five grams, three to four times a day for advanced Alzheimer's, yeah. if you can tolerate it. Micronized form. I'm taking 20 grams today just because I didn't get very good sleep last night. I just find it to help with recovering from, let's call it sleep deprivation. But yeah, got to watch the split dosing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Vitamin D, but you have to measure that in your lab. So you want that to be, you don't want it like over a hundred, right? So you want vitamin D levels that are probably like 60 to 80 would be a good level of vitamin D and getting that checked. But I think you should check it first. It's weird. I live in Florida, I get tons of sun, but if I'm not supplementing vitamin D, I trend to be low 30s it could be trend but so when i sure. supplement it i basically stay in the mid 60s to 70s mm -hmm. so vitamin d and melatonin i think is a great neuroprotective antioxidant supplement to take at nighttime and i don't take omega-3 supplements just because i did Rhonda patrick connected me with the omega-3 guy and i tried the omega quant and my dha levels and epa levels were off the charts <laughs> out of curiosity i got off of fish for like a month or so and it went down to normal ranges and then i tried nordic naturals which it was a company that reached out to me and i was like okay well i'll remove omega-3s from my diet and then add it back in with a dose and it popped me back up to a level similar to if i'm eating like tons of sardines per day so if you don't like sardines and you don't like eating a lot of fish i think nordic naturals is probably like one of the go-to brands mm -hmm. i'm not paid to say that or anything but they're legit but you could do the omega quant test and i think there's so much data on EPA and DHA that I think ultimately the omega-3 levels will be part of standard blood work. There's so much yeah. data emerging on that that I think probably within the next 10 years, like when you get comprehensive metabolic panel, CBC, like that, you know, DHA and EPA will probably be added to right. that. 